All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Um, I have a lot of stuff to talk about today. Of course, I'm going to get to the mass shooting and um, the guy who did it. It's astonishing that this guy who had mass shooter written all over him was able to legally uh, get weapons. So I got a bunch of stuff on that. Um, I have a, a poll that I'm about to get to, which shows that, I mean, you want to talk about America in decline. The trust in our institutions is low is not the word for it. They need to invent a new word because to say trust in our institutions is is, is low is a massive understatement. Um, and then later on, I have interesting, like contradictory news. On the one hand, uh, Biden is so ineffectual that he's losing his closest allies but at the same time that's happening, we have a new round of polls that just came out, which shows that Democrats are now beating Republicans in the midterm election polls. So that's incredible. We'll talk about that, too. Um, if I sound a little bit off, it's because your boy has the Rona. So I, I uh, got COVID and um, started, I guess, Sunday night, I guess you can say, had a little bit of a dry cough. And then um, Monday morning felt kind of okay, still a little bit of a dry cough. And then come like Monday night and Tuesday, I had, I would say, fatigue. I just didn't want to do anything, couldn't really move that much. Um, congestion, maybe a fever, though I'm not 100% sure on that. So I've taken some ibuprofen, taken some uh, Tylenol. And then today, it's still, at this point, I would say I just kind of have congestion. So, uh, but obviously it's not enough to keep me from doing the, the show for you lovely people. So it ain't that bad. You know, uh, I was vaccinated and I was boosted. Now they say that it only lasts like four months, uh, and I'm six months out from my last, um, shot. So that might have something to do with it, but it's also possible that the reason why it feels kind of mild is because I am vaccinated. So I don't know, uh, no need to speculate, just know. Uh, if I sound a little congested, it's because I am. It's because the Rona got your boy. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this is a story about how America appears to me to be screwed. So there's the headline in Mediaite, then I'll get to the entire poll in a second. Only 11% of Americans say they have a great deal of confidence in TV news. 11%. Okay. So th this is basically like people who really trust the media, okay? Uh, I'll read you some of this, and again, I'll show you the whole poll. Only 11% of Americans expressed a great deal of confidence in TV news, according to an annual Gallup survey released on Tuesday. In a recent poll of Americans' confidence in 16 major nationwide institutions, Gallup spoke to Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. Respondents were asked, please tell me how much confidence you yourself have in each one. A great deal, quite a lot, some or very little. Congress rated the lowest as only 7% of respondents said they had a great deal of confidence in lawmakers in Washington. 7%, guys. 7%. Television news came in second to last. That's 11% of the polls' respondents having a great deal of confidence. Unsurprisingly, when broken down by party affiliation, Republicans expressed a small uptick in support for TV news in 2022 than they did last year. Confidence among Democrats and independents dropped. Uh, in 2021, 6% of Republicans polled by Gallup expressed confidence in TV news. Jesus, 6%. 8% of Republicans polled this year said they had a great deal of confidence in TV news. Meanwhile, 26% of Democrats expressed a great deal of confidence in TV news. That's a that's an incredibly high number, given, given that it's 8% of Republicans. Um, that number dropped to 20% this year. Confidence in TV news among independent voters dropped from 13% in 2021 to 8% in this year's survey. Gallup also asked respondents to rate their confidence in newspapers. Overall, only 16% of Americans expressed a great deal of confidence in print news. That, actually, that I actually think is unfair. That is a decrease of five points from last year when 21% of Americans said they had a great deal of confidence in newspapers. So look, on this one, I, I totally dissent from the American public. Because in my experience, print news actually does a phenomenal job. And that's where I get a lot of the stuff I, I talk about on this show, I get from print outlets. You know, there are definitely some reporters who are trustworthy around the country. 
that work for print outlets. I think of like Jeff Stein at the Washington Post, for example. Um, I think mainstream media and, and TV news, cable news, is a totally different story. They are definitely untrustworthy, astonishingly so. But print news, I think, does a decent job, so I actually disagree with Americans on that specific point. Gallup found confidence in America's institutions dropped across the board this year, with the exception, this is awesome, of organized labor. That's the one that didn't drop. Now, to be fair, it's still at a stupid low number of 28%, which is, that's not good. That is not good. So let's run through it. So the most trusted institutions in the country. You see the number for 2021 there, and then you see the number for 2022. Let's focus on the number for 2022 this year, the most recent example. Um, small business is the most trusted institution in the U.S., 68% support it. Look, I understand why why small business, I, I don't even know if you can call it an institution. It's like by its very nature, it's like factionalized and and different. You know, each small business is different. There's no like giant small business cabal that works together, which might be why it's so trusted. It's more decentralized and you're dealing more with the individual people who might own the business or run the business. So 68%, I get it. You know, I, when I go to a deli or whatever that's a small business, I usually have a lovely time and get some lovely food, you know? So I totally understand that. 68%. The most trusted institution in the country. Small business. Then we get the military. 64%. Now look, in my opinion, I think that's mostly due to the fact that we do do military worship in this country. We do. You know, it, we, we've effectively put them on a pedestal and we treat people in the military like that. Now the individual people who sign up for the military, I understand. Brave, courageous, um, a lot of people do it, keep it real, to try to escape poverty and have a brighter future. And so I understand why you would venerate the individuals who do that. The problem is the military actually, as an institution, and the stuff that the military is told to do by the politicians, well, that's a different story now, isn't it? In fact, I have nothing but disagreement on that front. But it's not the fault of the individual people in the military. So I, I can understand why 64% support it. The police, 45%. The police are the third most trusted institution in the country. And uh, they're still under 50%. So under a majority of the country. That says something. So of all American institutions, only two are above water. All the rest of them are below. Wow. Wow. Now, by the way, I also will side note here, not to be too much of a dick, but this is another reason why the whole defund the police slogan was kind of dumb because it only polls at 18% support and police as an institution, relatively speaking, are more popular than other institutions. Now, that doesn't mean you can't say, hey, we need to reform it. Hey, we need to change it. Hey, here are the exact policies that we're talking about. I'm with you on that all the way. But defund the police was never going to land in the same way that, you know, defund the military wouldn't land. It just wouldn't land. And so you have to try to craft slogans that actually appeal to a majority. That's the whole point of a slogan. Anyway, I digress from that point. The medical system has 38% support. Now, that I would say is too high. Definitely too high. We just learned that a new study came out. 338,000 Americans who died during COVID didn't have to die. They died because we don't have a universal health care system. That was a new study that just came out. You know, we always talk about the old number, 45,000 die every single year because they don't have basic health care. That was pre-pandemic. I mean, we our healthcare system is a scam on top of a scam within a scam. Everybody's price gouging everybody. We pay the most and we get the worst outcomes in the developed world. Literally, Commonwealth Fund, we rank 11th out of 11. So I, I, I think that's too high for the medical system. Then we go down the list here. Church, organized religion. 31%. That honestly should be lower. We had the Catholic Church pedophilia scandal. Then we get the Southern Baptist, I think it was, pedophilia scandal. Um, this organized religion is sussy. Uh, public schools, 28%. Lower than I expected. Organized labor, 28%. Banks, 27%. That should definitely be lower. But still, 27 is a low number, even though it should be lower. Um, large tech companies, 26%. The Supreme Court, 25%. The presidency, 23%. Newspapers, 16%. Again, that one I think is unfair. I think newspapers do a decent job. Criminal justice system, 14%. Facts. You lock people up for for drugs, as we do, people are going to be like, man, this thing is kind of unfair. Um, big business. Big business. Third from the bottom, 14%. T 
TV News 11, Congress 7. That is, that's astonishing. So look, understand something. While I do have minor disagreements here and there with the list, um, as I sort of laid out for you guys, the bottom three being big business, so in other words, corporations, the media, and Congress, they nailed it. They nailed it. Now, again, I would put newspapers, so like print outlets, I actually have a, a great deal of confidence in. Um, organized labor, I have a great deal of confidence in. Public schools, I have a decent amount of confidence in, in that. You know, those I would put higher. But like big business slash corporations, 14% great amount of confidence. 11% TV news, 7% Congress. I get it, man. So look, I mean, when you look at this, the inevitable conclusion is like, People despise our institutions. They don't like our institutions. And I understand that because people feel like they've been left behind. People feel like we live in a, in a, in a country that doesn't look out for their well-being. And I think they believe that because we don't look out for their well-being. So, I mean, th these things aren't stagnant, right? Politics is, is fluid. It's not stagnant. So this can change. But... I think all of us kind of feel in our heart of hearts, it ain't going to change. Because if anything, we're moving more and more in the wrong direction, especially with what the Supreme Court did in regards to the EPA decision, saying they can't regulate carbon emissions, with Roe versus Wade taking away women's right to choose, and now the red states basically either banning abortion or nearly banning abortion. Like, people look around and they go, shit, this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, man. And um, you guys know my whole spiel. I think... The problem with those, the, the bottom three, right? So corporations, the media, and Congress. I mean, it all comes back to the same thing, right? The corruption, the corruption. So you have corporations and lobbyists and billionaires. They pay the politicians, and then the politicians turn around and do the bidding of the corporations, the lobbyists, the donors, the billionaires. Um, and, and so... They're looking out for them and not your average American. And that's why Congress is hated. That's why the corporations are hated. And TV news effectively is in on the game. and Because who, uh, who pays mainstream media? It's those same corporations that give them advertising bucks. And so their job is to basically go out there and paint the pictures that the establishment wants painted. Tell the stories that they want told. That's why you don't really get too many, you know, good exposés on things that really matter in mainstream media. Again, print is different. I think print does a great job. But uh, TV news, I mean, you guys know, they have a bias towards sensationalism. Um, they have a bias towards both the Democratic Party uh, for CNN and MSNBC and the Republican Party if they're Fox News. Again, despised parties, but... They get they have propaganda arms that is the mainstream media. And so I understand why people feel like we're in severe decline because we are in severe decline. And when you look at uh, the way our government is functioning or refusing to function, and now we have um, authoritarian elites that have veto power on everything in the Supreme Court with their abusing of judicial review. Looks to me like America's fucked. I wish that wasn't the case. I think we need to fight back as a matter of principle. But these numbers are devastating, and there's no way around it. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.